Hello, welcome to the week nine video. I know it's kind of like long time no see, even though I still don't see you. And I've posted a whole bunch of announcements in the past couple of weeks, no really new videos. So here comes the update. I was waiting for this one until this particular week, week nine, because now we have gone through the entire midterm part, no one else is going to be dropping well if they drop it's not a good thing because you do it before the official midterm at which point you can still withdraw without it horribly affecting your GPA so I normally wait for this big group announcement until after that date so by the time you watch this video I will have updated the groups and I will draw a line through any members that have withdrawn from the course and are no longer part of your group. I do not rearrange the groups at this point. So some groups might get a little bit smaller. For the most part, I haven't had a whole lot of announcements of drops, and so there should not be very many adjustments made at all. But I like to do this so then you know for sure that your group mates are actually still in the class. Now, week nine, this is the week nine file that is showing up on my screen right now. Yes, it's by my view, not yours, but you know, there you go. So this, honestly, this week is 100% dedicated to your group project. This means now that you know everybody's there, everybody should be involved. The entire project costs, costs, is worth 200 points. So let me tell you a couple of things. You do still have a quiz this week. Quiz nine, I told you at the beginning there will be a quiz every single week. So any person whatsoever that says, I didn't know we had a week, a week, I didn't know we had a quiz, it just simply means you haven't been following the instructions. So there's a quiz this week, and then how's it going? This is totally optional. This is extra credit. So those of you out there who are worried about your grade, this is one of the extra credit assignments. You're just updating me. You're just filling me in on what's going on. Now, what I want to make sure you understand is when you are on here, and I'm going to put this, viewing it as a student now, so you can see everything like you would. We have all these things here. These are announcements. These are where I'm going to post bits of information or apparently pictures of my kitty. Now, there's about to be some new announcements because I'm going to make the announcement that I was just talking about, the fact that midterm is now gone and blah, blah, blah. So make sure you are always reading the announcements. Now, over here, I'm planning on making a new checklist because I have had a couple of people confirm that it would help them if I put a checklist for your journal topics and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new batch of checklists. Currently, the only checklist here is for your discussions. This means if you're having a hard time remembering when to post for your discussions, come here, click discussion checklist, and it's going to tell you. And so for, here we go, discussion five. When discussion five opens up, first post is due by October 28th. So if you go on there, you do it, come to the checklist, do like this. It will save it for you. Then when you come back into your second post, you do this and you're like, oh, I need to come back next week. So then you go out, you do all your normal stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. Um, I can't remember. Did I do my post? Come back to the checklist and go, oh, I didn't check off that I did. I did the rest of my discussion. And then that reminds you to go do it. This does not automatically fill. You have to make this effort, but it will help you stay on track. So that's why it's there. I'm going to do another one, like I said, for journal topics, and I might do other assignments on there as well, but it's only going to be for the required things. Now, let's get back to that group thing, shall we? On occasion, actually almost continuously every semester, I will have a couple of people who pop in and say, I had no idea 
how to contact my group. Or I had no idea what group I was in. And then I have others who insist that nobody is communicating with them. Um, here you go. We're going to cover these topics right now. For this group project, I would start, look here, the papers and such, the important stuff. Notice there are multiple things having to do about the project. At no point should anybody say, I have no idea about the project. So group project details, if you click on this one, this tells you all about the group project. So this is going to tell you everything you have to do. You can't claim anything obviously because that's already gone. We have groups now. So if you're here and you're like, okay, well, let's just see the next one. If you just click this arrow, it'll take you there. This tells you about the grading. Please note that on here, I am pointing out right down here. I was about to, I was about to do like I do with the PowerPoints and use the laser pointer. But right here, this is a key, key, key thing. I gave you a group discussion board, which we're about to talk about again. You are required to use it if you want those points. This is a hefty amount of points based on me viewing your communication. I have covered this a couple of times. So if you have chosen to use Snapchat, group text, Discord, um, Google Hangouts, anything other than the group discussion board, more power to you. You are more than welcome to use any platform that works for you. However, I'm grading the group discussion board. So if you want to make sure you are also getting the grade for that, you will want to keep the discussion boards updated. I am stressing this big, big, big time right now because for the past two weeks, even if I haven't been communicating all the time, I'm constantly logging on and checking. I have seen almost no activity on those group discussion boards for the past couple of weeks, like almost none. That's disturbing because even though midterm was coming up and you have a lot of other stuff to do, popping on to just do a check on your group, that doesn't take much time. You can just hop on and go, hey, this is, this is the latest of what I've been doing. How are you? And then come back and check. Now, every single semester, I will have people in the group who don't get a good grade on the group discussion board and they've posted a decent number of times and then they get upset and they ask how come they didn't get a better grade for that and then I point out it's because you're supposed to read and reply to your other group mates. This happens a lot. You will have someone who decides it's only going to go by number. I also go by how soon when it started, you started posting on the group discussion board, and I talked about that previously. I go by how often you go on there, how many of the posts you read, how many of them you actually replied to, and whether or not you replied to people who replied to yours. So like if you said something and someone asked you a question and you never replied to them, that doesn't look good for you because that is not being part of a discussion. Um, this is why when people choose means other than the group discussion board, I constantly remind you, make sure to put it there. So we're halfway through. You should be pretty far into your presentation stuff. You should have pretty much almost, if not all of your research done by now, so you can start working it through. Another thing about this real quick is um, the read the feedback that I gave you when you did that last assignment telling me about your project. Because for some reason, and I would love to know why this happens, like half the class decides everybody has to do exactly two slides. Don't do that. Cover the material. If you have a very small thing and you're done in a slide, fine. But if you limit yourself to two slides for the amount of information I'm asking for you to 
delve into and to expand and to explain, um, you're either missing information or it is the worst possible slides you could ever see because it's a lot of information. You have to get enough stuff on the slide that we don't have to hear you talking, but we don't want it to be where it looks like we're just reading a paper. So images are important. Words are important. Nothing but words, horrible. If you are shrinking the font, if you are doing like size 12 or 14 font on a PowerPoint slide, that is too much. That is too many words, too much text. A visually pleasing presentation, I think right around size 24 tends to be the smallest. Other than that, you're like this because there's so much crap on there. Think about presentations you've seen. Think about the ones that were horrible that made you just zone out or groan or wish you could just run away from. Don't make those presentations. Think about the presentations that get your attention. The ones that make you want to look more. The ones that make you go, huh, really? I didn't know that. Do that. So, seriously, think it through. Do not try to shortcut it. Do not just copy paste and throw stuff on a slide. It won't go well. All right, now. Clicking forward to the next one, assuming it will go, because you know, that's how it works sometimes. This is <clears throat> the grading rubric that each group member is going to fill out for their group. So where it says things like attends group meetings regularly and arrives on time, I am not expecting you to meet in person. I don't want you to meet in person. We are in a pandemic and that is an extremely, extremely irresponsible thing to do right now. So anyone who says, oh, but we're meeting in the library, um, just know unless you're already roommates or unless you show me pictures of you wearing masks, covering your nose, your mouth, and your chin, and you're separated from each other, I'm going to think you're either lying about it or you are horribly irresponsible. This is an online course. Everything is set up where you can completely 100% do a group project online. You do not need to meet in person. What this is, <clears throat> is if you say, okay, I'm trying to put this together. Everybody needs to get this material to me by this date and time. Does the person actually do it? If you say, okay, every Tuesday, everybody needs to do an update. If somebody is not actually updating everything every Tuesday by the time you say, then they are not attending regularly. They are not arriving on time. That's what that part is. Do not, do not just give a four for everything. I do not believe that every single member of every single group is just perfect. Anytime somebody does that and they don't give me specific detail, I know that they are just BSing. I know that they are just throwing some crap in. So please, when you are considering this, notes. I want you to be taking notes. I wanna know details because your feedback on your group mates affects their grade. Not the whole grade, but that portion of the grade because I'm also looking at my stuff. Then you have this. This part is asking you very specific things. It's asking how well the group worked together. Um, number two is were the behaviors of any of the members very valuable or very detrimental? This means if somebody just shines, you'd say it. You say this person, you know, Billy did such an inc incredible job. I cannot believe he grabbed it. He ran with it. He helped us. He was always there for us, that kind of thing or detrimental. Karen complained she just couldn't do this. Her life was very busy. She said blah, 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 and so we had to do this. She eventually gave us the material, but it was after we had all already done the material because we didn't know if she was even around. That is what I want here. So anybody who has emailed me throughout the quarter or throughout the semester so far about calling out, calling out, calling out, calling out, and then the person finally responding way over here, that's the information that goes here. 
Um, I do want to know what you learn about working with this group that you will take with you. I don't want things like, Ugh, it just sucks. I hate group projects. I'm never doing it again. Because unless you are going to work by yourself in a room and you don't ever have to work with anyone else, you will be working with groups for your entire life. That's the reason we do group projects in school is to help prepare you for how to work out in the field. Will you always be doing like a presentation? No, but you will have to know how to work with people. That's the entire reason I do this and do this kind of feedback. Not to frustrate you, but to help get you to properly evaluate those around you because if you become a manager, what do you think you have to do? You have to do that. But then also for those people who think they can just get away with doing nothing and riding other people's coattails the entire time. This is how I show them that doesn't work in the real world. It might work for some teachers who just do that, here's a block grade, but the fact that I give every single person in the group a different individualized grade, this for me is to show the person you have to actually be responsible. If you want to be the, I do the bare minimum person, then I'm going to show you, you will be the one who is making minimum wage till the day you die because you never actually tried for more. So that's what this is. Um, yeah, so that's that grading part. Now, let's see, will it go forward? My internet's so slow today. Um, here's more about the project. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to show you all of the information is out here because I get really tired of the people saying they have no idea what to do. And the number of people who will actually post in the group discussion boards saying, I have no idea what this project is, is like somebody waving this huge flag saying, I do not read directions and I don't pay attention and I am lazy because I don't want to figure it out. I want someone else to just tell me what to do. If you want to get through life that way, fine. But I promise you, if you actually make the effort, every bit of information is out here. The irony is, and I've said this on many videos before, me saying this, um, the only people hearing it are the ones who are already doing everything. And so the people watching the video are going, ah, because you're dealing with the same people because they're in your group and you're having to constantly explain the same thing you already did because they don't want to read. Anyway, so this is all about the project. This is where I like to point out at no point does it say everybody does two slides. At no point does this say you have a minimum or a maximum number of slides. It tells you make it a good presentation. It tells you that exactly how to lay it out. It tells you right here near on, whoops, it did too much of it. It tells you right here and it's still gonna do it again. There, eh, it's highlighting too much. Anyway, right there, one presentation. I do not want it to look like five different people made five different presentations and then you just saved it in one file. This means it needs to flow. You should have the same kind of background unless you have a great transitional background where it slowly morphs into something else. That's fine if you want to attempt that. It should never, ever, ever be something where I can go, yeah, I could totally tell someone else wrote this. It's supposed to look good. That's part of the job. So make it look good, please. Don't make it painful to look at. Here are the other little breakdowns. So I would make sure to look over this if I were you. This is again reminding you every single person in the group gets their own grade. Yes, part of the grade is whether or not you turn in a proper, cohesive, complete presentation. So if you are in a group that has, say, four people, or started off with four people, and one person dropped out, and so now you have three people, and one of those people almost never replies. Yes, the bulk of the work goes on those two people that are left. You still make a nice proper presentation. 
but you also make sure to be detailed in your feedback, not in a random email, not in a different message, not on the discussion board, in that grading thing that I just showed you before. You will have a chance as an assignment to be detailed. So if you want to make sure I know everything, document it, write it all down, keep it in a Word document. I don't care if you want to put dates on everything, feel free. Give me a nice long running tally of exactly what happened. When that assignment opens up, the same week but a few days after the group presentation boards open up, um, turn it in. Give me the full documentation because if you end up having two people, or worst case scenario, one person doing the entire presentation, and you show me that you worked your butt off the entire semester, you keep me updated on everything, I see evidence of it in the group discussion board, like you are constantly posting, calling out, announcing, saying by this date I need this, and no one's responding and then you say okay i am now going to do this part as well this is still left out there you keep a running thing like that if i have evidence that you have done everything you can and those people dropped pretty sure you would know that you're going to get rewarded for this if you do more than your fair share you are going to get more than your normal points this is a way to show me that you have been a good worker all semester long, and I will give you the points for it. If I see zero evidence of anybody doing work, and then somebody comes back to me one week before the presentation is due, pitching a fit, saying, I can't work with these people, they won't listen to me, and I have been asking what do I need to do all semester, and they won't answer it, and I see you've only just recently even accessed the group discussion board, you are not going to do well. I don't care how much effort you put in on the last week. This is a semester-long project. I expect to see evidence of you working on it all semester. Okay, I'm hoping that is crystal clear. All right, I think that's the last in this file. Mm-hmm, yep. Now, those are all those group project things. Getting to one more place. Here is something that I think a lot of people don't bother looking at. Um, every semester I'm asked the same things over and over and over, so I actually made frequently asked questions. In the future, I'm going to put it in a slightly different spot to make it easier to find, and I'm adding more to it, but right now, this is it. And I tell you this so if at any point you want some answers, this talks you through. It shows you exactly where to find stuff, tells you why you might not be seeing things. It talks about discussions, how the grading rubric works. It shows you a little bit of everything. And so um, I would take a look at this if you find you keep needing to ask the same stuff. Now, we're going to back to the content area. I think, was it week two or was it week three? Dun, 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 dun. It was week three. Week three is when these groups were made. Notice there is a thing here that says groups have been made. If you click on groups have been made, this is one section. I have other sections, so this is one section. So if you don't recognize these people's names, that's why. But anyway, groups have been made shows you all of the groups and the people's names. This means if at this point you're saying, oh my gosh, I have no idea what group I'm in because I never bother turning in the assignment and I never bothered looking for the feedback, any of those kinds of things. Since week three, this has been posted. That means for six weeks, you should have already known what group you're in and you should be working. Then, I'm just going with group one because it's at the top. If you click here, this will take you directly to the discussion board you're supposed to use. That is one way to get there. Now, if you don't know that part and you are just really not sure, click on the discussion tab. You have your graded discussions. These are the ones you have to do. These are the ones where it's going to tell you um, the graded ones. 
are the ones that you have to be active twice a week. The group discussion boards are your personalized discussion boards. These are as often or as little as you wish to use them, but your individual discussion grade for the group project will be based on that. So if you notice right here, groups, it tells you straight up, this is where I set up the group discussion boards. This reminds you, this factors into your personal grade for the project. And then it says again, use these boards. So I'm going to point something out here. Right off the bat when you go, you see threads and you see posts. Group one here has been keeping everything under one thread, it would seem. Some have more threads, like group four, we have eight threads. Look at this, 37 posts. Here we have 41 posts. This is the other part I'm gonna point out. I am recording this on October 9th. Here is the last bit of information of anybody posting. This is why I am concerned. Nobody has even posted in the month of October yet in this area. Um, that's concerning because you should be contacting each other and being in con continuous communication. So, eh. all right, so this week, week nine, you have gotten through midterm, yay. Um, this week, dedicate it to your projects. I understand you have other classes, you have other stuff to do. I understand people have jobs, people have kids. Um, you need to understand you're not the only one who has other classes or jobs or multiple jobs or kids or grandkids even. Um, you also have to remember you are the person who signed up for this class. If it feels like it's a heavy load, you're the one who picked the load. Nobody else should be having to pick up your slack because you decided to pile it upon yourself. And I say this with all respect because I did the same thing. Um, semesters, pretty sure it's still exactly the same as when I went. A semester is supposed to be 12 credit hours. That's full time. I was a single mom. I was also working and I was going to college and I routinely had 19 hours every semester. I overloaded. I overloaded like crazy. I had two majors as well as the jobs and the kids. And um, I had no help, no childcare. I had to cram everything in a very specific amount of time. I wanted it. I'm the reason I chose to overload because as soon as I realized from 12 to, I can't remember if it's 12 to 18 or 12 to 19, it's exactly the same price. I even had a couple of semesters where I had to have the dean sign authorization to allow me to take as many hours as I requested because I so overloaded. It's exhausting. I understand it's exhausting. I get it. I get that working is also exhausting and that it's very hard to do all of it at once. I understand I am not minimizing that at all. I'm telling you I have been there. I know. However, you made the choice, so you have to stay on top of it. It is a disservice to you for me to make any changes because if you do not learn how to do it all properly, if you do not do things the way you are intended to do it, you are not getting the full experience, i.e. you're wasting your money. I actually yelled at the teacher one time because I felt like I wasted my money because he was not sticking to any of his things. He would just like, eh, whatever. I finished a semester of this one course uh, as a grad student, actually, and felt like I had learned nothing. And I was very angry about it. And he told me, but you got your A. And I told him, I'm not buying an A, I'm buying an education. And I don't feel like I learned anything. And so it's a waste of my money. I'm hoping you feel the same way because my thing here is not to just give you a grade. I want you to actually come away with a lesson. Again, that's why the group presentation, that's why working with the group is to actually prepare you for the real world. The fact that this is an online course and I'm making you do a group project online 
in our current circumstances is actually perfect. Because do you have any idea how many people during this pandemic had no idea how to get things done because they have never had to do it on the computer? Um, embrace this. This is giving you skills that we have proven this calendar year you need. So just work, do it. Quit coming up with excuses. Excuses are excuses. Are some of them valid? Yes. However, it's still an excuse. It's a challenge. Yes. Can you overcome it? Yeah. I am a firm believer. You do not go down without a fight. You do your absolute best. Quit giving yourself permission to have a reason why you're not doing something. Instead of saying, oh, but I have all of this work to do, say, I have all of this work to do, so I'm going to finish this here, this here, this here, this here. Prioritize. That's what time management skills are. You cannot create more time, but you can use your time more wisely. Had um, I went to counseling a lot when I was a student, and it helped because I was always running out of time on everything and I thought I was a failure at it and my counselor had me sit down and write down what I did it uh, what I did in general for every hour of the day so I had to write down like how long it took me to drive from here to here when I was in classes um, making food doing the dishes taking care of the kids all of these things and it was actually one of the best exercises I ever had to do because what I found was it wasn't that I was failing and that I wasn't doing enough. It was that I literally did not have more hours in the day. So I had to rethink how I was spending the hours because I kept thinking I should have more time, but it was down to where I only had like maybe four hours of sleep because I just had too much to do. That was at the point where I had to start getting a little more creative on how I did things. I had to appreciate that I might have to take what should be what most people consider a day off and do nothing but some work. I had to learn to work a little bit ahead so then if I ran into a speed bump, I wasn't late because I was already a tiny bit ahead. I actually wrote on my calendars the wrong due dates to force myself to kick it in gear to finish things by the due date I had on the calendar, which was actually a day or two before it was officially due, just so I wouldn't actually be late. So I had to learn a lot of really crazy skills, um, but it helped. So if you are finding you are having time management issues, and again, I specify time management because if you are saying you just don't have the time, that means you do not understand what time management is. So if you're having time management skill or issues, contact me, ask me. I have in the past helped students set up a schedule because if you can do that and make yourself stick to the schedule and stop giving yourself an excuse to not complete things and then be mad that other people don't, you know, uh, encourage or reward that behavior. Um, and so sorry, I hate when I forget words. But if you don't do that, you're never going to get a hang of this. But if you can actually develop proper time management skills, learn what it means, know that it is not an insult to say that you don't time manage well, but it's just a fact and you can embrace it, learn and make adjustments, it will set you up to do so much better for future semesters. If you wanna to go to grad school, it, I promise you 100% will help you with grad school and it will help you overall. Um, I think that's about it because I don't really have anything else to say. Week nine, use your time wisely. Great time to work on those time management skills. Great time to work on the communication, start talking to people. I will be at my mother's this week, week nine, for two nights, doing a bunch of tutoring while I'm there, but I will be there. So 
if you want to do a Zoom meeting, I have actually now set up a link, an actual um, a Zoom invite, and I'm going to be posting it. It's not always going to be open, but this way, if you say, hey, I would really like to meet with you, then you will have the Zoom information. We'll set up a time. If I happen to be online and I can hop on to Zoom, I'll be available just like that. Otherwise, we can set times up. So if you really want to have a good formal back and forth, just ask. I am more than happy to meet with you that way so I can answer your questions. I can try to clarify because I know my brain does this. And I would apologize, but I'm actually kind of okay with my brain being crazy. Um, I just know sometimes I lose people on my crazy train here. And so if you want to talk to me so you can reel me back into the topic at hand or ask for more clarification, just let me know. I can do this via email or through Zoom. I don't do phone calls. I'm not trying to be mean, but I don't do phone calls. I just don't comprehend very well on phone calls. Um, I'll explain that real quick so people know I'm not just trying to be a jerk. I do a lot by face and with reading. And a lot of times I look at people's lips to better understand. The whole auditory thing, I'm not as good at. I get very confused. It's like all the words kind of blend in my head sometimes. And as you've probably noticed, because you're watching the video, a lot of times while I'm talking, I just kind of do this for a moment. And that's kind of me visualizing the words, trying to make sure they're in the right order. I am dyslexic and dysgraphic. We already have talked about the fact that I'm on the spectrum. I have a whole bunch of different little things and I've come up with my own ways to just, you know, overcome, do whatever. It's just my way. If somebody is talking to me, if I can't hear them crystal clear, I have to put the words back together in my head to try to follow. Sometimes people mumble and I don't understand. Sometimes people don't have clear spaces between their words and then the words blend and bleed into each other and then I can't figure it out. If I know you very well and I've talked to you a lot, most of the time I can recreate it in my head. It might take me a while to respond, but that's because I'm replaying your words in my head. I don't know all of you very well. I haven't talked to all of you um, enough times, and so it makes it a lot more difficult for me. So when you type, I can read the words, and then I can go, oh, okay, I understand, and then I can take my time to respond. On Zoom with a video, then I can see you if you have a strong accent or you mumble or you have a tendency to have words bleed into each other. I can see your lips and I can kind of piece together the words that way. Also, I can see by the expression on your face if I'm making sense because if I'm talking to you and you're like, that lets me know I am not helping clarify the situation. If as I'm talking, I'm watching your face go like that, I'm like, yes, yes, they get it, they get it. And so it helps me. I need that extra level of communication. It's 100% on me, it's not on you. That's why I don't do the phone calls because I get lost, I get overwhelmed, and then I find myself wanting to hang up and I don't wanna just hang up on you because that's really rude and I wanna answer your question. So anyone who has ever asked me to please call, that's why I tell you no and that I don't do it. I will do a Zoom call with you. 100% I will do a Zoom call. Please use video if we do the Zoom because video helps me, 100% helps me. Um, yeah, there you go. And that is the Linda Bernhardt communication issues. Anyway, um, I think that's it and I have to finish this because oh my gosh is it driving me nuts that I have an email message there and I haven't opened it. It has been driving me crazy and I'm wondering if it was driving anyone else crazy but you're not going to know what it was. Ha ha. So week nine, that's it. Get your group stuff done. I will definitely be looking through those discussion boards to see who's keeping up with it. I'm starting to write up my tallies now too. Um, 
that's it. Tell me if you want to chat via Zoom, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I'm going to start making the stuff for week 10 pretty soon. That's it. You got through midterm. Yay. Peace out.